In this video, I'm going to walk through actually using PowerShell to manage Azure. Now, the first thing you need is obviously an operating system that has PowerShell. The good news is any kind of Windows 8, Windows 2012, it's going to have the right version of PowerShell you need to actually go and hook in and leverage it. So you're going to want to go to this website. If you just search for install Azure PowerShell, it's generally the first link you find. And what this has is step-by-step -step guidelines on how to actually go and install. It tells you the prerequisites, version of .NET you require, and then how to actually get it. So you'll see a link here to Microsoft Web Platform Installer. Click this link, and then when it opens, you're going to select Run. I accept the user access control prompt. It's now checking for what are the latest versions of what are available to me to actually install. So I'm going to download the 8.16 version of the Azure PowerShell module. Now it's important to realize Microsoft update this very, very frequently. So what you want to do is frequently go back at least once a month and go and check, hey, is there a new version I need to install? And that's going to make sure you have access to the newest capabilities within Azure. So I'm going to let this install. So that installation is now complete. What I'll actually see has been installed is a new Azure PowerShell. And if I select that, what it will actually do is open up a PowerShell window and then automatically load in the Azure PowerShell commandlet. So I could then just go and use this environment. Now the other option you can do is actually just import those modules yourself. So I'm going to close that down. And now in my PowerShell integrated scripting environment, I would normally close this up. I, I would actually like to just even reboot. This is just my client and make sure all the right paths have been registered. It does update the PS module path. If I actually go and look at my system and I look at my system control panel applet, from that, I can actually go ahead and look at my advanced system settings, environment variables. I'll actually go ahead and see a PS module path. And in there, I can see it's added the PowerShell various modules into there. So I just need to make sure that's taken effect for my PowerShell window. So I can go ahead and actually import the module. So I can always see what modules are available. So I can do get module and list available. And notice I'm using the PowerShell integrated scripting environment. I like this because not only does it give me kind of script windows where I could edit scripts, it gives me IntelliSense. As I actually type commands, it can start to suggest what is it you want to do. So if I start to type get dash, the IntelliSense starts to give me options. So I can see I've got my Azure module, so I'm going to do my import module. And I don't have to do this with PowerShell 3 and above. It will actually automatically load in modules. But I'm going to go ahead and manually import in my Azure module. Now I may want to check, well, what actual version do I have? So I can always do a get module, Azure, and I can do dot .version. Now I installed, I think it was the 8.16, so sure enough, there's the 8.16 that shows me the version I'm using. Now there are a huge number of commandlets available and this grows every time they release a new version. Exactly how many commandlets are available? Well, if I do a get command and I can actually look at the command type, I wanna look at commandlet in my Azure module, I can measure that. So I can actually see how many are within there. As you can see, there's 606 commandlets in the Azure library. So there's a huge amount I can do. Now, the first action I actually have is to connect to my Azure subscription. And there's really two ways of doing this. Historically, we would use the get Azure publish settings file. And what this will actually do is it will actually open up the web browser. It will ask you to sign in actually as your account, your live ID, or your organization ID, whichever has access to your Azure subscription. 
Then it would download a published settings file, a .publish settings file. Once I had that file, I would simply import it. I would do an import Azure publish settings file and then type the name of the file I downloaded. That's the historic way of doing it. And it was really based around certificates, management certificates that gave me rights to a subscription. But it does not support the new um, Azure Resource Manager based way of doing things. It doesn't support role based access control. It's better to actually sign in as an account. And to do that, we use the add Azure account commandlet. This will bring up a little window that allows me to sign in. So I would type in my account and then my password. So I would go through that. So I typed in my credential, it's checking it, it's working out what I have rights to. And then I'll be able to actually go ahead and start using my environment. You can see it's actually showing me the various subscriptions I had. I could then actually go ahead, for example, and select an Azure subscription. So if I'm not sure which ones I have, I can always use get Azure subscription. There we go. And that would show me all of them. To actually select the one I want to use, I can just use select Azure subscription and then the name of it. So my one is my Windows Azure internal consumption. So I've now selected the Azure subscription I want to use. I could very quickly do get Azure VMs to see all the ones in my particular Azure subscription. And it will give me some basic information about all of them. Now one thing you're gonna to want to do is to set your default storage account. So when I perform various actions, it has a default storage account to leverage. So to see which Azure storage accounts I currently have, I can use get Azure storage account. I'm gonna format it in a table. I wanna show my label of the storage account, the location, and what type is it? And I'm gonna auto size that. So what I can see here is that I have, oh, I misspelled account type. I missed out a T. Let me just type that in again. So you can see I have a number of different storage accounts. I can see the locations and the type. Is it geographically or geo redundant? Or is it locally redundant or zone redundant? So I go ahead and pick whatever one I wanted to be the default. So at this point, I would actually type in the command to set that. So I could say, well, set my Azure subscription, my subscription name, and whatever your name is for your subscription. And I would say I want my current storage account name to be one of those that you have available. So I'm just gonna say Savtech store East US. So that's now set the default storage account. And at this point, I can now go ahead and start doing things. I already looked at getting my VMs. I looked at my storage accounts. I could then go ahead and create virtual machines, create disks. So maybe I want to see, well, what are all maybe the sizes in various regions? Or maybe what are the regions? So I can do get Azure location. And this will show me all the various Azure regions that exist. I can see the name of the region. I can see the size of the virtual machines that are supported. What types of storage account are available at them. So it's a nice way to quickly see, well, what are in each of these? There's also Azure images. So get Azure VM image. There's a huge number of these. And again, these are all the ones I could actually use as part of creating my virtual machines. So it's giving me detail about every single image that exists in Azure. So here's a piece of code I created that actually gets all those images and puts it into a variable. I then create an empty array of objects. So what I'm gonna do is I wanna find the latest 2012 R2 image. 
So I create an empty array. Then I go through every image that's in the images variable. And if it contains the label Windows Server 2012 R2 Data Center, I store it into my array. I then sort it by publish date. And now I can actually go ahead and look at what is the newest one. So I can see here that the newest image available is the March 2015 Windows 2012 R2. So I could now use this in my own code. Maybe I want to go and create a new VM. Now, before I create a VM, a VM sits inside a cloud service. And I might want to check, well, what do I want to call that new cloud service? So I can actually use test as your name. And I want to check for service. So if I call it Savile Test CS Azure. So it's going to tell me if that name is available or not. So false. This means that the name is available. Let's try something that I'm pretty sure would be taken. Let's try Minecraft. I'm sure there are Minecraft servers up there already. So someone has already got that. So I can't use minecraft.cloudapp.net, but I can use this one. So, okay, I'm good to actually use this name as part of my service. So I'm gonna do a quick create of a new Azure Virtual Machine. The easiest way to create a new VM is actually the new Azure Quick VM commandlet. Now there are other commandlets to do a more complex with a provisioning configuration. But if I just want to create a very quick basic virtual machine, I can do new Azure Quick VM. I can do a Windows or Linux. I'm going to do Windows. I specify a service name. So I'm going to use that one that I just used above. Now normally I wouldn't type this in. I'd say save these things to variables so I avoid spelling mistakes, etc. I give a name for my new virtual machine. I call it test55. What image do I want to use? So I'm going to use that latest 2012 R2 image that I fetched in that previous piece of code. And I need the image name. I need an instant size. Now remember, there's various different instant sizes. You need to make sure you get the naming right. So there's extra small, small, medium, large, extra large. And that's really a standard tier. They're standard and basic tiers. Basic doesn't have load balancing and the scale capabilities. It has lower IOPS and lower network. Standard tiers have that. But originally we just had standard and we just had the extra small, small, medium, large, and extra large. Well then Microsoft adopted sort of A5, A6, basic underscore A5, and then D and G series. You have to use the right name. When we did that get Azure sort of location early on, that showed us the sizes that were available. I'm just going to create a medium. So that's kind of a standard A2. I have to give it an admin username. I'm just going to call it local admin. And then a complex password. I'm just going to say password 123. And that's it. I could then submit this and it will go away and submit that job to the Azure fabric and go and create that. Now what I actually missed out here was a location because this is a brand new service name, I have to put a location in as well. So I'm going to add in dash location. I'm going to say East US, that's one of the locations available. So notice it's as that check, make sure everything's valid. I submitted it again with a location. That will go through, that's successful. And then within sort of five to six minutes, that VM will be created. Now once it's created, I probably want to go ahead and connect to it. So I can actually use the get Azure remote desktop file. And what that will do is that will actually download me an RDP file that I can use to actually go ahead and connect to my virtual machine. So this isn't actually responsive right now because it's still submitting that job. So I'd actually have to go and type all this in. I can't just tab it. And I would do, there we go. I would do the service name. So it would be that. Savile Tech CS Azure, the name of the VM, so my test 55, and then a local path where I want to save that RDP file to. So I'm going to test 55 to RDP, and that will be it. 
that would then download the RDP file. I could double click on it and connect to my virtual machine. So that completes this very, very quick summary of how I can actually go ahead and leverage the Azure PowerShell commandlets. Again, look at the examples I have in the application. I've got far more detailed. I use complex provisioning. I look at storage and do everything else. So this was useful. Thank you very much.